Orgasmic Enlightenment, where the sexual and spiritual come together. I'm Kim Anami, and I'm a holistic sex and relationship coach and a vaginal weightlifter. In this show, we explore all things intimate. I believe that our sexual energy is life force, creative energy, and we can use it to shape our worlds, strengthen our relationships, and self-actualize. I blend the most avant-garde information from neuroscience, ancient sexual practices like Tantra and Taoism, to renegade wellness modalities to show you how to create gourmet sex in your lives. Come one, come all. Five steps to cervical orgasms. Cervical orgasms are the holy grail of female orgasms. They are the most powerful, pleasurable, and life-changing orgasm a woman can have. And I say life-changing because they truly do change your life, and I am not exaggerating. If the purpose of our sexual energy is to create new life, this is exactly what these orgasms do. They birth new life every time you have them. Not not necessarily little babies kind of life, but at the very least, some kind of shedding of the old skin of the self and a rebirth, a renewal, a metamorphosis. I have used cervical orgasms for decades in place of therapy, though, you know, good therapy is great, but I would say it's like supplemental to having cervical orgasms, which I consider to be essential good fuck medicine for all women. I have spent hours, thousands of hours processing trauma and negative experiences from all parts of my life, but especially those connected to the heart and my sexuality via doggy style position, which happens to be the best position for having cervical orgasms, hands down. (laughs) The vagina is an all chemical cauldron. It stores emotions and experiences. If they sit there unattended and unprocessed, these can later show up up is all kinds of things like cysts and growths and other symptoms of unwellness and stuck energy in the reproductive system. If you lovingly and consciously fuck these things out of you, it's literally like fucking the shit out of you. You can transform all of these stuck feelings and energies into power and wisdom and experience, rebirthing them and you. So let's talk about what cervical orgasms typically feel like. So I would say they are characterized by five main qualities. The first, intense full body pleasure. The second, tears and overwhelming emotions. And we'll break all of these down in a moment. The third would be feeling high. Like if you've ever taken ecstasy before, that's what it's like, but much better and all natural. The fourth would be that they can last for hours and days rather than the few seconds that the typical clitoral orgasm lasts for. And the fifth would be a sense of being reborn, a spiritual reset where you come into yourself, just like the French phrase, la petite mort, the little death and rebirth. So let's go into these in more detail. So the first quality is intense full body pleasure. Unlike clitoral orgasms, which are localized at the clitoris, cervical orgasms radiate out from your pelvis into your whole body. Every cell of you feels like it's bathing in intense pleasure and euphoria. Behind the body high, though, is the soul high. And not only do these feelings encompass your body, but your entire being, which leads us to the second quality of tears and overwhelming emotion. People often say that they feel like they've seen God and they feel totally at peace with themselves and the universe. And this is my experience. I have a sense that everything is right in the world. I'm open. I trust myself. I trust life to bring me good things. I trust that I can surrender and open to the universe itself because it will support me. So you know the kinds of tears that you cry when you're so overwhelmed with love and beauty and emotion, not sad tears necessarily, but tears of awe. So these are cervical orgasm tears, <laughs> though I will say that at times I have cried deep, deep tears of release and catharsis. And women usually don't know what the source is of their crying, as in, you know, it wasn't necessarily tried to 
a particular incident or trauma, and it doesn't matter. All that matters is that your body and your psyche have found a way to release some very deep stuff, and you are letting them by going bravely into these orgasms. In Taoist sexual reflexology, which maps out all of the reflexology points in the vagina and the vulva, the cervix is considered to be the heart point. Being stimulated at the cervix helps to open the heart, and women need to have at least to some degree Degree, an open heart to get to these orgasms. So that's why they feel like a combination of your vagina and your heart and your spirit opening all at once. The cervix is the gateway between worlds. This is the doorway between life and death. It opens during birth to pass new life and it opens at ovulation and menstruation to let the possibilities or not <laughs> of life pass through. This is a spiritual gateway for women. These orgasms clear out old residue from the heart, the vagina, and a woman's entire being. I have often said that a few hours spent fucking and having deep spiritual orgasms is worth hours and hours and hours in the therapist's chair. And like I said, I still think that therapy is great, but this is a power tool you have available to you as a woman. So use it. The third quality is feeling like you are high. So there is an energetic pathway going from the cervix all the way up to the crown chakra. Opening and activating the cervix turns on this pathway, sending sexual energy all the way up to the crown. This is your spiritual center. So you open up this connection to your higher self and your spiritual sight. After my first cervical orgasm, I remember walking out into the world feeling like I was completely high and I had insight into all kinds of situations and people, yet I was utterly calm and full of trust and open to the world. I felt centered and grounded and beautiful. You know the moments where you're so at ease in your own self and you just love being in your own skin, well, that's it times 100. It's lit from the vagina to the crown. And the vagus nerve in the body, which is considered to be the spiritual nerve, also goes from the cervix all the way up to the crown. And so you're activating all of these very powerful energy pathways within yourself and you are liberating your sexual energy to where, you know, for most people, this is a quite base, lustful, kind of low most common denominator experience and you're elevating that up to the most spiritual portal that you have and combining these energies which is you know <laughs> incredible So the next quality I said is that they can last for hours and days. So clitoral orgasms are like a sugar high, but shorter. There's a quick burst of intensity and then it fades and you're often left with a blood sugar plummet. Cervical orgasms are like organic, biodynamically grown food that feeds you for days after. It helps to build you into a better person. So these physical, emotional, and spiritual sensations remain for hours, pulsating, reverberating, through your body. Like I said, they act like this giant cleansing scrub brush type mechanism and rebirthing you, right? Like I would say resetting your cells and we'll get to that in a moment. But some people like for me, for example, I'll feel this for days afterward. And these re, you know these orgasms reach down into your cells clearing out old residue and rebooting them and this is why people feel like they're vibrating at a higher level after these orgasms and they feel like this for days afterward because the more that you have of them the higher you build and vibrate it's this cumulative practice so it's like starting a meditation routine and if you do it sporadically you get some benefit out of it but if you make it a daily commitment you create this cumulative of build of positivity in your life. It's like a rolling (laughs) wave that just keeps getting bigger and bigger, making it harder to ever fall back down to a level of, let's say, pessimism and negativity. So you raise your vibration so high that it's like protection and insurance against falling. The same happens with these orgasms. They are super food for the soul and for all of your cells. They help to self-actualize you. 
which leads us to point number five, the spiritual reset, this concept of coming into yourself, the little death and rebirth. So your sexual energy contains the blueprint of you. All of your DNA and yourself is housed here. When you tune into this energy and especially going as deeply into it as you do in cervical orgasms, you reset yourself. It's like the rebooting of a computer and you wipe it clear of any kinds of viruses and malware and anything that takes it off of its true course and its original settings, these false programs that get layered on top of, right? And it resets it to its original self. And that's exactly what happens with these deeper orgasms. You reset your entire autonomic nervous system, your ANS, and you bring yourself back in touch with your authentic, unconditioned, unprogrammed, true self. And this is probably the most powerful action of cervical orgasms. Way more powerful than any kind of drug experience or anything else that you could take or do. And it all comes from you, from within, for free, without you having to be dependent on anything or anyone else. So Yes, you may have a partner who helps you to get there, but plenty of women, myself included, have cervical orgasms through self-pleasure. So these, uh, the idea of getting to cervical orgasms, I would say the five best tools to get you there can all be summed up with one phrase, which is feeling connected. These aren't the kinds of orgasms you can phone in. Your vagina and your cervix are the ultimate truth-telling barometers. If you aren't present and connected and feeling the love, they won't come. It's as simple as that. Clitoral orgasms are a lot more forgiving. You can bust these out watching porn or fucking someone you aren't really that into, but not the cervix. The cervix is all about deep and sacred truth. So there are three levels that you need to be connected on, to your vagina, to yourself in general, and if you have a partner, then to your partner. So here are the best ways to get there. Number one, using a jade egg. Vaginal numbness is the source of so many female issues, and this numbness is symbolic of all of the deeper ways women aren't connected to their sexuality. Vaginal numbness is also the product of physical atrophy. A weak, uninhabited vagina just isn't going to feel anything or communicate with you. So the best remedy for this is regular use of a jade egg. All you need is 10 to 15 minutes a day, three to four days a week and you will begin to build the articulation and strength in the vagina so that it becomes a mover and shaper in your life. It becomes a compass for you. So then you begin to fully occupy it as your power source and you amplify all of the physical sensations within it. I teach a full step-by-step jade egg exercise routine in the vaginal kung fu salon and in my yoni egg kit and salonette which you can find in the anami alchemia shop second would be yoni massage so these are tools that you can use to release tension tightness and energetic trauma in the vagina we de-armor the vagina when we remove any kinds of walls and protection that have been built up over the years by doing this you awaken and you activate the self-healing and creative powers of your reproductive organs on a physical level and emotional and spiritual and since cervical orgasms are nothing if not emotional and spiritual, then this is essential to do. So I have a full yoni massage step-by-step practice in the vaginal kung fu salon that you can check out. Third would be our cervical orgasm couture dildo. So I mentioned before that it is totally possible to achieve cervical orgasms on your own. All you need is a good sized cock and I can give you that. I have designed two different cervical couture dildos which we carry in our Anami Alchemia online shop. We have Anahata which is actually the Sanskrit word for heart which is apropos. This is your phase one one dildo. It's a longer specimen. And then Siva, which is phase two, and this is a much girthier model. I recommend using these in tandem with Akasha, which is our G-spot opener, as part of our Holy Trinity set. 
This way you can fuck yourself progressively, starting with Akasha, which will open up your G-spot and prime and warm up the vagina. And then you move on to Anahata, which stimulates the cervix directly and begins to help that to open and release. And then you finish off with this deep sense of fullness with Siva. So this way you open the vagina incrementally all the way home. The fourth suggestion would be my vaginal kung fu salon. Not only do you learn to use and master the jade yoni egg, but you build more sensation and strength in the vagina. The VKF salon also helps you to heal past trauma, rewires your nervous system, and clears emotional blockages, as well as any negative programming and beliefs that you may have picked up along the way. This includes sexual abuse, trauma from your upbringing, and even beliefs that you may have about your sexuality and what it means to be a woman. All of these things can create blockages which inhibit you from tapping into your true self and your true sexual creative power. So anything that's standing in the way of you inhabiting your body is going to show up in bed. It shows up in the way of low libido, lack of lubrication, and then most definitely a lack of orgasm. Once you've done this internal feng shui, you clear away the debris that covers over your true self and your true vagina. And then you can claim what's rightfully yours, cervical orgasms and wetting the bed with your ejaculate. The fifth suggestion would be my How to Be a Well-Fucked Woman Salon. So the other major component to having cervical orgasms is learning to let go. I said that your heart has to be open to have cervical orgasms. You have to be able to surrender and open yourself on such a deep level. So this is an ongoing process of learning to communicate and express your truth. And if you have a partner, to keep the conversation flowing and open with them. So you're always expressing your deep parts. You're not hiding. You're not trying to be, you know, polite and and not share these things. All of the things need to come out. So once you do that, your orgasms will reflect just how close and open you are, both with yourself and say a partner. If you're very connected, then these orgasms come easily. If you hold each other at a distance and you're content, go along with the don't ask, don't tell, don't rock the boat kind of relationship, you will never get to these orgasmic places. So vaginal kung fu and how to be a well-fucked woman are like parts one and two of how to be well-fucked. And vaginal kung fu goes more specifically into the jade egg work and all things vaginal like a female body user's manual and well-fucked woman goes more deeply into the art of feminine energy how to surrender more deeply how you communicate with your partner and a lot of specific sexual techniques so both of these salons comprise a woman's complete sexual education All right, so let's take this even further, and we will speak to this week's well-fucked all-star, who is Sarah. Sarah has come out of a deeply religious upbringing where sexuality and women's bodies were totally shamed. And from that place, she has navigated her way out of that and all the way into the holy land of cervical orgasms. So she's an alumni of Vaginal Kung Fu and my How to Be a Well-Fucked Woman salon. Well fucked all stars. Welcome Sarah. It's fantastic to have you here. Thank you, Kim. Thank you so much for having me. So tell us all about your journey to cervical orgasms. Awesome. Yay. Okay, so I I'm so excited to share this because when once it happened to me, I was like, I need to scream this from the rooftop. So here we go. Um, but I I really don't know where to start, so I'll just pick a spot. But my journey to it was um coming into learning about your work basically, because I grew up in a huge family. I have seven sisters and on my mom's side they're christian on my dad's side they're jewish but we went to a baptist private school and so i had a lot of religion in my life and even though there was variation in those religions one common clear message was streaming through all of them and that was that sex was bad it was dark it was wrong that orgasms were bad dark and wrong and pleasure was also bad dark and wrong and so i grew up with a very warped uh, view on orgasm and self-pleasure and i just didn't really know anything about the female body except for that 
I have boobs and I can bleed and that I can give birth. Like that's all I really do. And, and usually uh, with pain, all of those things with pain. Exactly. And it was something to be ashamed about. And it was something to be uh, just not proud of. Right. And yep. that was really frustrating because when you grow up with a lot of women in your life, you know, I, I looked at women as like just these amazing people that could do so many things. And then, I don't know, I just felt so lost because I I had all of this pressure and this almost spiritual abuse, I guess you could say, telling me that it was bad and wrong and shameful to be a woman. And so um, I grew up hating that. I, I hated the fact that I had a vagina. <laughs> and with that came um, hatred towards that part of me. And so when I found your work, <laughs> and I just hang on, I just want to jump sure. in and say, like, I think that's pretty normal because there's so much negativity and shame and blame placed on mm. women and their sexuality that I think it's pretty natural that women growing up in this culture, girls, mm -hmm. women are going to internalize that. Right. And have exactly. some kind of, I, you know, the very least would be dissociation. The worst would be like a really negative loathing type relationship to their bodies. Right. And that's all reinforced through allopathic medicine. Like, oh, you have right. a difficult period. We'll just put a giant band aid on that and put you on hormone blockers for the rest of your life. Right. Like, exactly. so everywhere you look, the dominant messaging is, yeah, being a woman is difficult, painful. And all you, all you can really do is sort of grin and bear it. You know, there's not a real solution. There's no real joy in it. Just tough luck. Exactly. You were born a woman. <laughs> exactly. No, you said it right. And it was so frustrating too, because in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know, if God made me that way, like if I was, right. you know, I'm a female, like what am I supposed to do? And it, yeah. and I actually found this in a lot of my own sisters too, like where they hated it as well. And then I found out like my friends hated being a woman as well. And I was just like, man, like this sucks. Like, yeah. what do we do about it? Um, and then when I uh, found your work I, and it's actually funny cause I, even though I'm not religious, um, I'm still spiritual and I do believe in God. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to pray and uh, ask God for a sign because this, this loathing, it was carrying out into other areas of my life. Like I hated dating. I hated um, opening myself up because I just didn't feel comfortable in my own mm -hmm. skin, right. which was really sad. And so I remember literally just praying. I was like, God, angels, universe, whoever, like, can you help me out here? I just, I hate feeling this way. Please send me something to help me feel better about myself. And literally the next day, this girl who I was, <laughs> I was following her on Facebook and she's like, oh my God, you guys need to check out this woman. She's lifting a surfboard <laughs> with her vagina. <laughs> and this is back in like 2000, I think 14, 15 or something. Yeah. And I was like, wait, what? And so I clicked <laughs> on it and I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's amazing. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I was a little bit like freaked out, not in a bad way, but just kind of like, wait, like, how is she doing that though? You know, like, right. and, and it was, uh, so it was more of a curious thing. And I, um, yeah, I just, I went to your website and I just gorged all your material and I was like, oh, she has a salon and, uh, you know, and I just, I, I consumed as much as, of your content as I could. Um, and then I enrolled in your class G-Spot Ecstasy and then it was really powerful for me, but then I realized I needed deeper work. Like I needed like a, a complete rewiring, reprogramming of my subconscious mind <laughs> my body everything and so, so then, just so people understand like the g-spot ecstasy is a four week do it yourself yeah focus in the, on the g-spot program and then yeah. you're gonna i think talk about vaginal kung fu as the deeper longer more in-depth right. study yeah exactly and g-spot ecstasy was amazing absolutely but i knew i needed more groundwork because of my past and so I just I, I um yeah I enrolled in vaginal kung fu and I learned about jade eggs and and 
you know, lifting things with my vagina and like just all these crazy stuff. And, and I healed so much, so, 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 so much. And, um, and then right after taking vaginal Kung Fu, it was like, okay, I'm, I, I want to take well fucked woman. Cause I felt like it was part one and part two. Yes. And it was, yeah. and it was honestly, Kim, like, seriously, it was the sex education I never had that I always needed. And, um, it just completely changed my life. Like, I can say that hand on heart. Um, and from that, at the time I had a boyfriend, um, we're no longer you know, together, it's been a couple of years, but when I told him about this whole, you know, all these different ways like that a woman could orgasm, because I always thought that you could only orgasm through your clit and that was it. Right. And like most people think that's most right. people's perception, yeah. Yeah, and my boyfriend at the time was actually like, no, actually you could have like, <laughs> things called g-spot orgasms and i was like what like, what are you talking about and he was like yeah i'll show you and i was like oh okay i didn't know you could do this and so then i thought that oh i needed a man to do it right mm -hmm. but then your work counteracted that and said no like you can have a man there or and you can also do it by yourself. And so we we just kind of started slow and you know, worked up to G-spot orgasms. And then um, my first cervical orgasm I had with him. And then funny enough, like a few weeks later, we ended up breaking up. And I remember being like, oh no, like, can I no longer have these? Because I'm not dating him. Yeah. But then I just kept going back to your salon and I was like, well, Kim says that she can have them like, by someone touching her arm so like <laughs> if she can do that i know i know i can i know i can and i just kept telling myself like uh, and i know i know it might sound a little crazy but i would tell myself like i am a multi-orgasmic woman i am a well-fucked woman i'd literally say it to myself over and over and there's so much power in your mind if you know because if you train your mind to believe something your body will follow and um vaginal yeah, was... orgasmic affirmations exactly and then i would tell myself that i was like i have a woke as fuck vagina and that's when i just kept telling myself that over and over like, a woke as fuck vagina that's such woke an awesome as fuck. one I love exactly it. and so i just kind of kept telling myself that following your salon like just doing everything you said and i was like she's right she was right and i started having them on my own and it was in that moment i knew even though i was grieving the heartbreak of this person that we were no longer together i knew i was going to be okay not because i could just now have all these orgasms but i felt like oh i, I feel healed i feel like i have access to something that i didn't have before and i honestly felt like in a way i felt closer to god um, maybe for someone that's spirit, source, divine, you know, whatever you believe in, but I felt closer to God. And I was like, wow, like he didn't, you know, make this to be bad. He made this to be pleasurable. Like I wouldn't have the capability to do that if it wasn't in me, you know? Right. And, and so it just completely changed my life. So thank you. <laughs> well, that's amazing. And I love that you liken it to or talk about it being a spiritual experience, because that was my own journey from the very beginning, like having my first cervical orgasm, which was actually the first orgasm I ever had. And oh, wow. feeling like I was in this transcendent, ecstatic, super mm. like all is one kind of place. And mm. that's how we describe them as being these super powerful connectors. And the idea, at least in depth, Taoist sexology is that the cervix, you know, the point there is connected to the vagus nerve, which goes all the way right. up to the crown chakra and is often referred to as the spiritual nerve of the body. And right. that when we activate that energy, it does, it goes all the way up to the crown chakra through the heart. So we have to, it helps to open the heart and we also need an open heart. And then it really just explodes out where we do, we attain this sense of 
enlightenment from these orgasms and that's why i say that these are some of the most powerful self-actualizing and personal growth tools that women have available to them and they only make us better people and if women aren't having cervical orgasms i'd say they're operating at a deficiency right because you don't have this extremely powerful tool and shortcut to these in, in wild amazing you know higher level places in ourselves Absolutely. Yeah. And when you talked about that, like it, for me, it came from a place of it was the most powerful tool I had for personal transformation and spiritual evolution, because not only did it heal me from um, like the inside, but also the outside. Like it was and that's that's I think what your work is based on. You can't sugarcoat stuff. You can't just treat a symptom like we're going to the root of the of the issues here um and cervical orgasms what they do is they amplify at least in my experience they amplify your life and 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 all the good things but then it also it's almost like dusting off these old cobwebs and these dirty you know uh files that you haven't really looked at it and, and it causes you to go deeper and deeper and deeper and like you said it's this self-actualizing tool that it's just completely transformational beautifully said yeah and you know i look at them as you know over the years ways that i've worked through trauma and processing like you said to process even your breakup you know, they're mm -hmm. really good at going through acute situations. Like we take our grief, our stress, our unresolved trauma, we like take it into the vagina and it works as this alchemical cauldron to transform it into power, mm -hmm. into bliss, into wisdom. And we also were able to release these things. Like I, you know, one of the hallmarks of cervical orgasms is tears like having these mm. you know sometimes often deep guttural crying tears that we often don't even know the source of and we don't need to know the source of all we need to do is follow that trail into that feeling and then allow it to overtake us and then move through us and so it's this incredibly deep portal and vessel for transformation if we are able to go there and I think another real pivotal piece of getting to cervical orgasm is courage because when you're standing at this abyss of emotion or um you know like what a unknown you have to keep going like that's a real trait of them is that a lot of women maybe come up to this place in themselves and they feel some kind of fear or like there's like I said like a giant abyss and so they pause and they contract and they hold back and so they don't go there and I think the real price of admission is this sense of courage and continuing to open and continuing to trust and fall and I think that cervical orgasms are so much like spiritual experiences because they're the same concept of opening to a power, opening to an energy greater than you, whatever your spiritual belief system is, whether it's a traditional religion or you're just, mm -hmm. you know, have a spiritual concept of life that you're opening, you know, thy will be done. Like this, this energy, this presence has, has some kind of greater knowledge and wisdom than us. And we open to that. And that's the same thing with the trust in the orgasm, like in God and orgasm, we trust. <laughs> Amen to that. No, and I love what you said about it taking courage because, um, so I'm fascinated by words and languages and I just love, I just love it. And uh, the Latin word for mm -hmm. courage, it comes, it means cur and it means the heart. And that's what I felt like cervical orgasms did for me was it opened up my heart, just opened and opened it and opened it. And, um, and that's, I think, part of the formula to having them is you have to have an open heart um, and they can help you open your heart. Cause after my boyfriend and I broke up, I mean, I was, I was really in love with this guy. Like I, I was the best girlfriend I could have ever been. Um, and my friends, after we broke up, they were like, Oh, well just like go date another guy. And I was like, no, like I'm not going to get under someone to get over somebody else. Right. Like I need to process this like I need to get through it and whereas he he took that route and then never dealt with the hurt and the pain of it and is apparently still dealing with that whereas me I feel completely healed of it stronger uh, than before but it you know I think that that's what one of the greatest tools you can have is 
when if you're going through heartbreak like have cervical orgasms or right. take some you know can salon everyone so that you can learn how to have them <laughs> and you'll be just fine they're the they're the ultimate heartbreak healer yes absolutely so can you describe for us how do cervical orgasms feel to you like physically emotionally spiritually you've, you've touched a bit on the spiritual element but mm-hmm. how do they also feel in these other realms Sure. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting. Cause I remember when I first learned that they were even possible. Um, cause I didn't even know I had a cervix until I was like 19, 20 years old. Cause I, all I was taught was I had a vagina. <laughs> so I didn't know any, any, any anatomy on that. Um, so for me physically, um, they're nothing like a, a, a clitoral orgasm, clitoral orgasms for anyone listening there they kind of remind me of like when you walk up like a little 15 foot ledge and then you like jump off like a 10 foot waterfall and it's like, Ooh, you know, whereas, (laughs) and then like, it's done like goodbye. Whereas a cervical orgasm to me, it feels like you're just going like further and deeper and deeper and deeper and you're, you're vibrating and it's consuming consuming it's powerful um and it spreads throughout the entire body um this it's like this orgasmic spiritual enlightening intense but also safe in a way climax and it 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 lasts longer for me i've had them last for hours at times um not every single time but they're definitely something that you feel throughout your entire body and it's like you just got this like incredible massage spiritual tune-up and like you just let out all these tears of emotion that you don't even know what you're crying about <laughs> um and it, it just feels incredible i i can't i've never had anything feel like it so it's kind of hard to compare it to something else because it's not like anything else and um i just always every time i do i have one i feel healed i feel like everything's going to be okay and everything is safe. Um, but it's, it's not like a clitoral orgasm where it's centrally located to the vagina. It's, it's literally just like inside out every fiber of your being, all your cells, your hair, your eyelashes, everything. (laughs) Does that make sense? (laughs) Yeah, I love it. And you know, it's hard in some ways it's hard to describe it physically because it's physical but it almost it, to me it's always felt mostly spiritual like an energetic mm-hmm. like yes there's yeah. physical pleasure it's like a full like if you take a clitoral orgasm and spread it throughout your entire body like there's a sense of it being a full body orgasm mm-hmm. but what's even stronger than that is more like what you said like waves of bliss and pleasure but like this sense of serenity and deep faith in the world you know like you just said like everything is safe and everything's going to be okay and that's what it's like having the most open full heart you've ever had and multiply that by 10 and spread it all over your full your whole body like you said every cell and then you're just you're existing on this different plane you know like everything that you do like I remember after some of those early experiences for me like going out into the world after and feeling like I was floating or I was in this divine absolute trust and faith and like every iota of circumstances in the world was lining up in this divine spiritual way and I had insight into that and utter faith in life you know versus like kind of a an anxiety scurrying kind of mentality or way of being that many people I think exist in it's very different you know and that to me is like the most powerful part of it like and that's why I've always sort of downplayed the importance of clitoral orgasms because like you said it's like (laughs) a quick hit and then a drop and then it's over you know and I've never really felt like they contributed to my betterment as a person or to the betterment of my life and because you know for me I was fortunate to have had cervical orgasms so early on that that was my template you know, this is what right. sex is. This is what orgasms are. And it wasn't until right. a few years later, even, that I experienced a clitoral orgasm. And I was like, oh, this is fun. But, like, this isn't really an orgasm. Like, right. like this is exactly. whatever. Like, good for a kick, you know? But, like, this isn't really what orgasms are all about. 
Yeah, exactly. Clitoral orgasms, I think they're good for like when you go and visit in-laws and like family members who are kind of annoying and you're like, I just, okay, there's no, you know, because I don't do drugs or drink or anything. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to, you know, go smoke a cigarette. Let me go to the bathroom <laughs> and like touch my clit for a minute. And then like, okay, now I have like a little bit of a, you know, a, a way to mentally process being around these annoying people. But that's, I think what they're good for in my opinion uh but i use them for my coffee breaks right yeah. like i talk about stimulating the clitoris similar to what you're saying like to get a burst of energy to get a hit yeah. you know i don't do coffee i do orgasm so i'll go right. and stimulate myself to get this sense of pleasure and bliss and rejuvenation but not it's not the deep life-changing version of that that vaginal orgasm orgasms and especially cervical orgasms would give a person so exactly there's a time and a place but to me like the real pursuit the real holy grail is cervical orgasms yes so what so you've described is there anything else you would add about the effects you've seen in your outer life because you have described that and like I said I so relate to that and you've said it very beautifully is there anything else you would say about that like how they've changed you as a person yeah I mean and that was the thing too I remember because like when I first found your work and I was like okay like I believe in in and investing in my growth, whether it's spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And then this was the first time I was like, okay, I'm, I'm investing in my sexual, sexual growth, growth, which was kind of a new thing for me. And, uh, but I, I was like, okay, like I want, I really believe in this woman and I believe in her work. And I believe that if I invest in this, it will come back to me tenfold. And, and I'm not sure why I felt like that because at the time I wasn't doing good financially <laughs> and, um, I was very lost and confused in my life. Um, this was years ago, but I, I just believed that I would make back that investment. And what I think the biggest exterior result I've seen is actually in wealth, in my, in my business, in money. Um, before I was really struggling financially, I now own a few different companies. I, um, I own my own coaching business and that has just skyrocketed in growth. Um, I own a, a consulting marketing um, business with my sister. We're just launching another CBD skincare line and that's been doing great. So, um, and I, I, it's just crazy because I, that wasn't something I was expecting. Like I wasn't expecting like, Oh, I have cervical orgasms. Like I'm going to make more cash. Like <laughs> it's, it's not like that was going on in my head, but I, it, it released this feeling of surrender and knowing that I was going to be taken care of. And that's one of the seeds of manifestation. If you want to create and generate more wealth in your life, part of that is having trust and faith. And what better way to practice trust and faith than with orgasming and, and having and experiencing that on a daily basis. So it was this, uh, this roadmap almost to wealth, which was not what I was expecting. Um, and I was able to get out of debt. Uh, I had some student loans. Um, and yeah, I would say that's the biggest change that I've seen from a physical standpoint. And then also just... I feel more confident in myself, which has helped me to put myself out there more. I do a lot of speaking and I like going, like speaking and teaching at retreats and stuff. Whereas before I would have been too shy to do that. But I feel like I have this reservoir of confidence in me and I'm not sure where it comes from at times. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's the orgasms. <laughs> like it's that sexual energy. And uh, so I think those would be the two main things that I've seen transform in my exterior life. I love that. And I think that, you know, in terms of wealth too, and you talked about manifestation, I mean, sexual energy is our life force, creative energy. And when we're really tapping into it and owning it, and I think for women, the deepest way they can do that is through accessing their cervical orgasms and that potential. It does. It just amplifies everything and our ability to create and wealth, generate wealth and, you know, sex and money and creativity are all second chakra issues. And so right. when you help to start to liberate, especially the sexuality, people notice, like, I literally hear things like money just fell into my lap. And I'm like, well, that's because that's what attracted it to you is your lap. So. <laughs> your lap attracted it. That's exactly right. Yeah. I love it. 
I love it. And I found that too, like it's not just expected income, it's also unexpected income. Like I, I have literally, so I have this thing on my phone where I track unexpected income that flows to me. Um, because oh. what I have found is that when I track it, I'm activating the part of my brain called the RAS, the reticular activating system part of your brain. And what it does is it filters out certain things um, and for you to pay attention to. So have you ever been like driving a car and then you get a new car and then all of a sudden you see that same car everywhere and you're like, oh, I never noticed that car before. Well, that's your RAS um, and it's your brain saying, okay, pay attention to this, this is important. So what I found is when I track the money, I, you know, I just keep it on my notes. I'm like, okay, I track that someone bought my coffee for me for five bucks. Um, or I don't really even drink coffee, uh, like tea, you know, five bucks and they paid for it. I'll write that down and I'll say, thank you, you know, to myself. Um, and then if I get like an upgrade on a flight or like right. a free ticket to something or whatever, like it doesn't matter what it is. I and I remember actually when I took your salon, uh, I think it was the well fucked woman salon you sent us like these beautiful oils and I was like, wow, like I would have had to pay for that, but I didn't because it was given as a, like an extra gift, you know? So I tracked that. And what I have found is the more, more I do that and the more grateful I am mixed with this whole orgasmic sexual energy, that's just always brewing the money. It just, it, it's almost like it needs to come to me. Like, it's like, no, like I want to come to you because you're grateful and you're open and you have faith and you have trust that you can make this happen, that you're deserving of it. Um, so that has been my trick, I guess you could say for manifesting unexpected wealth. And uh, I'm not talking like 50 bucks. I'm talking like since doing your work, it was almost at like over a hundred thousand dollars of unexpected income, just coming through all different, all different ways, whether it was like winning a, a little, um, scratch off or, you know, someone saying, Hey, like, here's a free car to use for a year. I mean, it's just crazy. The opportunities that come in when you are in tune with that because you're paying attention to it, but then it's also backed up by that sexual energy that's just revving inside of you. I love that. I love that practice of you tracking the gifts that you're receiving, you know, because it's so powerful and they're like, it's one of the tools I use not every day, but at times to just do like, you know, a daily gratitude. Okay. What happened to me today that I'm grateful for, you know, and list mm, 10 to 20 yeah. things. Right. And then you just stay in that place of abundance and, you know, acceptance of receiving all of these gifts because yeah, like you're activating that part of yourself. So I love that as your tool. Thank you. Yeah, it's been, it's been helpful. <laughs> I'm grateful for it. So. so what would you say that some of the most important steps for you were on like to get to this place of having cervical orgasms? Taking your salons, mm. number one. <laughs> um, I mean, if anyone's listening, like, uh, you know, just take the salon, like if you if you haven't just take them, that was the first thing. Cause it's one thing to read about it. It's one thing to, hear about it and like kind of try to do it on your own um same thing with like when people try to learn vaginal weightlifting right. like i i remember buying this like jade egg off of amazon for like <laughs> 10 bucks or something years ago and i was like okay like you just put some like floss through it and like lift it and and i had no clue what the hell i was doing so i i when i took your course i was like oh that's how you do it so if you want the results that other people have learned from them. So I would say that was the first thing was taking your salons. Um, but in from a more technical standpoint, the actual process for me is looking at areas of my life where I'm not surrendering, uh, surrendering, looking at areas of my life where I'm not being honest with myself on how I feel, um, or if I'm letting people like take advantage of me, um, because that can retract you from the heart of who you are. And when there is that retraction, the whole point of cervical orgasms, in my view, is to bring you closer to yourself and, and that heart. Um, so eliminating things that no longer serve you just from a physical standpoint and a mental, emotional standpoint, and then also practicing um, surrendering 
deep breathing, um, uh, just faith and trust, and then just letting yourself know like, hey, it's okay to go here. And even if you're with a partner or you're by yourself, no matter what, I've got you. I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I have your back no matter what, because you are your longest commitment. And the greatest promises, the most excellent promises you'll ever make to your, to anyone is, is the ones that you make to yourself. And so if you know that you have your back and that you can hold space for whatever comes up from those cervical orgasms, because they are, they can be very intense. And like you mentioned, you can cry about things that you don't even know what you're crying about. Um, if you allow yourself to hold space for yourself, then they will come more easily, more quickly, more powerfully, and more and bring more transformation. Um, so that's kind of been my my area of, of of processing it. And then also vaginal weightlifting has been a key integral role in all of this because if you have a you know a numb vagina then it's not going to feel good and you're just there's going to be that disconnect so the egg has been really a beautiful instrument in allowing me to bridge that gap from where i was to where i wanted to be um but i would say that to learn it from someone a professional such as you and learn why it's there and use it as a tool to heal and learn and grow from. And that's what's allowed me to get to that point. So tell me more about the, your experience with the jade egg in terms of what it did for, like you mentioned, a numb vagina. Like I talk about that a lot with women, that if the vagina is numb, they can't feel anything and they're just dissociated from it, disconnected. And the egg is such a great tool to reestablish that connection, to bring pleasure back into the vagina. So tell me more about how the jade egg facilitated that for you. Yeah, well, I, I did speak about how I grew up in a very religious household and it was very confusing because like, you know, we'd celebrate Christmas, but also Hanukkah and like Passover, but also Easter. And so I was really like confused. All what, yeah, <laughs> and uh, so it was, it was great, but it was also like, wait, what are we doing? Uh, who are we? Um, and so it was really confusing. And, and that, but that one story, that one theme remained true in all of it, which was like sex and, and all these things They were dark, bad, evil, wrong. And so I was taught that it was wrong to insert anything into your vagina what? until you were married with anything. a Christian, anything, anything. So not even like a tampon. Oh and so gosh. I had this fear of like, and, and it sounds like I'm not embarrassed by it, but I'm also, I'm like hearing myself say this out loud. I'm like, wow, like that's really fucked up. <laughs> like that I was taught that. Um, I didn't and... know that, you know, I've always suspected, like, cause a lot of women have um, issues with putting things in their vagina. Like you're articulating it as sourced from the, you know, this, these teachings in your sure. religious paths, but um, other women have just had this sort of revulsion towards doing that. And then yeah. I always talk about how in the development of the Kegel exercise, like the original Kegel exercise involved putting a device inside the vagina. And then that's where they had this r miraculous rate, you know, 90% success rate carrying urinary incontinence, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then once it moved on from Dr. Kegel's work, all these other OBGYNs who adopted the practice told women not to put things in their vagina and right. I honestly think it came, that movement then came out of this fear of telling women to put things in their vaginas right like and you're yeah. kind of confirming more of the origins of my theory of why that happened because as soon as they stopped using an internal device the success rate completely tanked you know like immediately right. dropped 50 percent and then kept plummeting so it's a pretty big deal so anyway carry on I'm just yeah. interested to hear no no that. absolutely yeah. absolutely and I, yeah it was just it was a very warped belief but I you know when you're when you're taught that by religious teachers who you're supposed to respect and <laughs> supposedly care about you quote unquote um you you believe it and it's I don't even like to call it like brainwashing it was like almost brain damaging because it was it was so ludicrous and outlandish looking back at it but at the time I just I didn't know any better how do you know who you told know? you that like what who actually said that to you so we went to a Baptist private school growing up from the time I was in the second grade to I think the sixth or seventh grade 
And when we were in the sixth grade, my teacher, now we weren't Baptist, by the way, but my teacher, she, um, then the reason we went to the school was because my great grandmother wanted us to have a good education. And we did get a great education, but everything was like Bible bullshit based, basically. Um, yeah. yeah, tainted with, yeah. It, they weren't really teaching like the true aspects of it. And um, she once, had all the boys leave for like recess and she kept all the girls behind and she was like okay ladies i want to talk to you something and she would not make eye contact with us and we all thought we were in trouble me and all the girls in my class and she's like so you know around this time your body starts doing these things and it it will start to release blood and you know basically giving us the period talk but she told us that you know traditional secular worldly whatever they believe in using tampons and she said that that was wrong because it would break your hymen and it would all these things and she said so you you want to use like pads and and you know panty liners and things like that and she said if you if you use a tampon you are basically breaking your hymen and then you're no longer a virgin and god so doesn't like that Right. And so we were, and I remember just like looking around at my class, like <laughs> WTF, right? Like I did not know what to think. I was just like, okay, this well, it's seems so, really odd, but that's what we were taught. It's so interesting though, this, like, you cannot know your own body, like this mm -hmm. imposing or like trying to create this obstruction between you and your own self-knowledge of your body and your sexuality. Right. Right. Yeah. And that if you explore that, it's wrong and bad and evil and vile. And that makes you vile and evil. And when you're a little girl who just wants to do the right thing and you've had, you've been scared your entire life that if you even tell a tiny little white lie that you're going to go to hell, you're going to want to follow the rules because you don't want anything bad to happen to you. So I just kind of was like, okay, this does not make sense, but I'm going to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I did until I was about like 18. And then I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like, I, I mean, I was still like warped in my mind with the whole sex thing, but I definitely knew at 18 i was like i i think it's safe to use a tampon i think it's safe to, like i don't think god's gonna punish me for that um so there was a little bit of rewiring that i did on my own mm -hmm. just from my own thought process but mm -hmm. the bulk of that rewiring came after learning from your salons um so so fast yeah. forward that then you said to the jade egg practice so how did mm -hmm. that help yeah well there was it, it brought me back to connecting with myself um number one and knowing that it's okay to insert things into your vagina and that it's not even just okay but it's it, it can be a wonderful healing transformational thing for you um so there was that and it also made me feel more connected to myself that i was doing this to pleasure me or, or to heal me, not that it had to be with another person for another guy, that I could do it for me, offer me, only me. <laughs> and it, it didn't have to include anything because that was another thing I was taught that the purpose of women was to bring pleasure to a man. And that was it. Like that was a woman's purpose, like raise his babies, have his babies and give him pleasure. Don't be in the way. So, um, and then it also helped me heal, uh, and the numbness in there, because I, when I, when I did start, cause you, you know, spoke about in your salons, like the idea or, you know, just the invitation, I guess you could say of like, well, what if you allowed yourself to explore your vagina with your own fingers, what would that be like? And so when I started doing that, I, I almost felt like I was going to throw up because I was just like, man, like, because, I, and, and that's nothing against you. It's just like, I was so, like, I was not doing good, like in that area of my life. I was just like, man, like, I want to believe that this is okay, but everything I've been taught says it's not. And so it allowed me to heal the numbness in there. And then within a couple weeks, I think I had my first G-spot orgasm. Wow. And, and then within 
I, oh gosh, I don't even know the time frame from the G spot to the cervical, but it was it wasn't that long. I I had my first cervical orgasm, so. And uh, yeah, I just feel like it's stronger, and um, I can lift a few pounds <laughs> with it, and which is cool. Um, and I have like these little weights that I bought, and I have the pouch, the silk pouch that came in, and yeah, it's a, it just makes me feel like I'm kind of in a relationship with it, like you mentioned in, in the salon and not it just being like okay like time to you know put it on my vagina it's more like oh okay like hey little egg how are you like okay cool today we're gonna do my retro practice like it's almost like I'm talking to it and being like hey like you can take out anything that doesn't need to be in there and put in all the good stuff that does mm-hmm. need to be in there and so yeah it's just been it's it's like one of my favorite, favorite parts of my day, honestly, is that uh-huh. 10 minutes that of, of time. And I'll do like a breast massage while I, while I do that with it. So. That's amazing. I love that. And yeah, I mean, the egg practice is multidimensional. The most physical element of it is, yes, building strength and more pleasure, sensitivity, awakening the vagina. But then because we look at the sexual organs as having all of these energetic qualities and reproductive, creative qualities in the world to birth ideas and birth our thoughts and feelings out into the world, then it takes on this whole other element and yes the egg can act as this thing that absorbs negativity out of the vagina and then releases positivity in its place so because it's a seed it's an egg exactly it's very symbolic very and it's very beautiful too so and jade as you know it's that healing stone so that right in itself is um is really powerful actually crazy story my my ex that I spoke about earlier, he, he was all into the like G spot orgasms, all that, everything cervical. He was like, yeah, like, let's do it. But when I presented the whole jade egg thing to him, he was like, what? Like, that doesn't make sense. And I was like, no, I'm telling you. And my egg that I had at the time, um, it, I used it every day. And that was during the time where I was doing the most work on healing, like my past and all the BS that I was taught and he could feel the difference too um after even just a week he was like wow like you feel stronger you feel tighter you feel like um like even more wet like it just came with so many physical benefits not just for me but also for him so that's I love that element too I mean I've been because I teach the jade egg instruction on my retreats that I do twice a year and so I'll have a day with the women where we do the practices and then they go back to their partners in the afternoon and the partners can feel the difference even from one session of working with the egg and so yeah in a week they can start cracking walnuts and whatever (laughs) (laughs) opening up bottles and (laughs) I saw your bottle opening challenge that you did. It was amazing. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, that was fun. I I won that thing. You did. There's no one who did that better than me in my vagina, really. I agree. agree. If anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, there was, I think it was last year was it last year there was this bottle cap challenge that jason statham started online where he did this like roundhouse kick and opened spun the cap off of a bottle and then all these other people started to do it and post their versions of it and so of course i posted my version of it which was me opening up the bottle cap of a bottle with my vagina so (laughs) you can find a copy of that video on my youtube channel it's quite the sight it's amazing so is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I mean, honestly, I would just like to say thank you so much for everything you've done. And anyone listening, like, if you haven't taken Kim's salons, like, just take them. I promise you, you'll make back your investments. And, you know, it's just the greatest tool I've found for personal transformation and spiritual evolution and just healed so, 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 so much. Like literally, I don't know who I would be if I hadn't found your surfboard lifting vagina <laughs> in my feed years ago. Like I, I literally don't know who I would be. So I'm, and I'm getting emotional talking about it because it, to this day, it just continues to give, give me gifts. Um, and the salons, you have access to them 
for forever and I've taken them over and over um you know anytime I want to learn more and, and grow more and every time I take it, it it it's almost like taking it for the first time because I learned so many new things that I didn't know before so that would be my that would be the one thing I would like to share with anyone give yourself that gift because you deserve it that's so amazing thank you so much for sharing your story and your breakthroughs and it's so inspiring like it's so wonderful to have you share and be a beacon to other people especially with your religious background because that's so common and people internalize so much of that stuff and often remain mired in it right and you were able to kind of like feel your way out of it and then you know take what you like and leave the other stuff and that's you know i think religion and spiritual paths have you know definitely have a lot to offer but they're often colored over by and they've had editing done by humans you know and they've had some insertions that probably weren't the original content right and (laughs) and so that's the problem and so we have to then rely on ourselves as this you know, intuitive sounding board to figure out and define our own relationship with spirit and pick apart what we think is true and real Mm -hmm. and leave the stuff that has probably just been put in there as edits and control factors, you know? So I think it's wonderful that you can share that aspect of it to give people, as I said, be a beacon for them to find their way out of similar circumstances. And, you know, you've come a long way, like from what you've described Mm -hmm. and your upbringing and that kind of programming, you've come a massive way. So awesome work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I learned from the best. And it's, <laughs> and, and <laughs> I, I mean, I have to say, like, it's, it was some of the hardest work I've ever done on myself. It's one thing to go to the gym and, um, or go to therapy or, you know, make your bed every morning and, you know, to try to do things that encourage a positive lifestyle, but to go deep within yourself to the center, to the heart of who you are, it is, some of the harder work but it's the most rewarding so don't be afraid to do that and don't get discouraged it's a it's a process you know and everyone's timeline is different and if you haven't experienced a record orgasms you absolutely can just keep telling yourself that you can and, and do kim salons i mean i can't refer people to anyone else because there is no one else i've i've taken a few other courses and i'm like uh can i have a refund this sucks like <laughs> let's just stick with let's just stick with kim's work it's the holy grail and take it from there so yeah just do it and and watch your life change for the better and have a woke ass vagina i love it well thank you so much sarah Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was such a treat. Vaginal Kung Fu is coming. Are you? Registration for my legendary eight-week program is now open. Check it out at kimanami.com slash vaginal dash kung dash fu. This episode was brought to you by the Jade Yoni Egg. This is the premier tool on the market for all things super pussy because yes, it is normal to have a lubricating, orgasming, and ejaculating vagina every day of the week. Side effects of the Jade Egg include multiple orgasms, vaginal orgasms, ejaculatory orgasms, increased lubrication, increased libido, and easier childbirth and faster recovery, ecstatic pleasure and sensation, boosted self-confidence, the reversal of urinary incontinence, easier periods, PMS, and menopause. The life-changing magical egg is found at kimonami.com and Anami Alchemia. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, subscribe and also leave a review. And send someone else the gift of a healthy libido and an off-the-charts love life by sharing this episode with them. We'll be back next week, and in the meantime, many happy orgasms.